So I wanted to make a real quick video and uh, kind of put questions out there to you guys. Um, I've been trying to rake over in my head what I think the 49ers might do, seeing how this year they're lacking draft capital. And I have a couple scenarios in my head, and I wonder if you guys think the same thing. Um, my first scenario would be of a sign-and-trade type thing with uh, Eric Armstead. Um, to me, that seems like the most viable way to reacquire some picks and then also drafting a younger, cheaper option at the same position. Um, it's hard to, it's hard to know if his success is going to be, uh, sustained because, you know, this is his first year that he's played like this in his five-year career and, was it a product of the system because of all the great players around him? Was it because it was a contract year? Regardless, his value has never been higher. So, to me, as good as it would be to keep him, I think it's much better to actually to move him in a type of a trade situation. Um, a sign and trade you know, where you, you know, make him available for draft picks. I feel like that's the best option the 49ers can go with. Um, if they somehow do keep him, then a guy like Jimmy Ward will probably walk, which I made a video about this uh, a couple weeks ago, which wouldn't be the worst option um, because I think Tavarius Moore was drafted eventually to take that position anyways. But it uh, to me, it just seems like the most viable option with Ar uh, Eric Armstead to acquire picks um, because I feel like his value, like I said, his value has never been higher and why not trade him now while the, you know, while the, the fire is hot on him. Um, it was the best possible scenario for us to have a year like we did uh, rushing the passer. Um, my, my other thing too is uh, our position in the, at uh, the 31st pick. I mean, to me, I would trade back. If you can pick up a late second round pick and then maybe an additional third round pick, I would do it. To me, um, I feel like accumulating picks is your best way to, you know, to maneuver this draft because we pick at 31 and then we don't pick again till the fifth. That's a huge, huge gap. And, um, Seeing how unsettled and unresolved wide receiver is with us because of, you know, you know, the possible departure of Goodwin, Pettis' poor play, um, Trent Taylor and both um, Trent Taylor and Jalen Hurd both coming off injuries and they're not knowing how if Hurd's back is going to be a long term problem. There's talk that uh, he didn't fly to the Super Bowl because he was worried about his back. I mean, he was out all year, and he was still worried about it in February. So with that being said, I feel like th with this being such a deep wide receiver class, why not take a shot at trying to acquire picks and, you know, try to see if we can get a another receiver in the second round? I don't know. Maybe we should double dip. Maybe go second and third again. I don't know. Like I said, this is the time of year where I get excited for. Um, so it's all a wait and see for me. It was just a random thing that came to my mind. I figured I'd make a video on it because I wonder how many of you are feeling the same way about it. Um, one other thing, I have this companion book that I bought last year called the SIS Football Rookie Handbook, um, Comprehensive Scouting and Analytics Guide. It was made by a former scout, um, and I used it last year when I watched the draft, and it was an awesome. It's an awesome book. It's an awesome find. You can find it on Amazon. It's pretty much uh, a scouting report on every eligible player that's in the draft. So you know when you buy those guides at the grocery store sometimes, and it'll have like a certain amount of guys that are in the draft, but it won't have every guy. This literally has every player at every position, and it ranks them from you know worst or first to worst. You know. Of course, last year Bosa was number one in his position, but I even had a scouting report last year on Jalen Hurd. You know, a lot of people didn't know who he was um, with the DK Metcalfs uh, of the world and all those other players that were 
talk and bandied about that the Niners might go after, and then they drafted a guy like Jalen Hurd, who I didn't know who he was. But it had something on him, too. It's just a really good uh, companion book for the draft. I suggest picking it up. I'm going to as soon as it's available on Amazon. Um, I'll leave the link in the description if you guys are interested. It's just a really good thing to have watching the draft. It makes you feel educated and more uh, like you actually know what you're uh, talking about when you talk to people about um, the, the players that your team drafted because you have like pretty much a scouting report, a, like a legit scouting report. Um, and yeah, leave it in the description if you guys are interested. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it. I just wanted to make a quick video about where you guys think we might what we might do if we're gonna trade back. If we're going to sign and trade a player, um, namely Armstead, with this value being as high as it is right now, uh, I don't know. I'm excited about the draft. Uh, free agency is not too far away. Um, it's March 1st. So we're, uh, we're approaching that time of year where a lot of things are going to get interesting. We're going to see how many players we can bring back from our Super Bowl run and what players we can add. And uh, I, I can't wait. Um, I've turned the leaf, I've moved on after the loss, and I'm into 2020. And I hope you guys are too. All right, guys, I'll talk to you everybody later. See ya.